Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to update the firmware on the new RB system devices. Now, I know I did my initial video on the RB system a while back, and people have been asking about the update video. Apologies for that, I lost this thing. And at the moment, to do the updates, you need one of these. This is the STK adapter, which lets you flash receivers and devices like this, but also will let you configure like the stabilized receivers using your PC. So if you're looking to flash the RB at the moment, you will need to use one of these. I know in a future update, FreeSky are gonna make it so that you can update it from your transmitter, but at the moment it's not there, so you'll need to use an STK adapter. But before we get into that, let's have a look at where you can download the stuff that you'll need to do this. Right, so this is the FreeSky website, and what I'm gonna do is just pop into the RB, and I'm just gonna choose the RB25S just because I know that that has everything on it. So what we're gonna do is just go straight to the download page. And on the download page, you'll see two options. You'll see firmware, which is what you're gonna need to update this. And you'll also see the Lua script, which is what you'll need to set everything up on your EFOS transmitter. So actually, we'll do that in the video too. So you can see here, this is the firmware for the RB25 and RB25S. At the moment, there's no firmware for the 35 or 35S on the website, but I do have a copy, like a pre-release of the firmware. So I'll be putting that onto my RB35. So this is the RB35 page. You can see at the moment there's no firmware, but I'm sure that will change in the future. But I'm going to download the Lua script so we can install that on the transmitter. So I'm just going to save that to my desktop. The next thing you'll need if you haven't already used an STK adapter is the software to get that working on your computer. So I'm just gonna to go to products, we'll go to other, and we'll find the STK on this page. So it's just down here. And again, once this loads up, we're gonna to go to the downloads. Right, and on here, we've got a couple of options. So we will need this uh, firmware update tool for the PC. So I'll stick that on my desktop. And you may need the Windows driver, so I'm just going to download it just in case. It's not been updated for a long time, so you might be fine. But I know I don't need it, but if you do need it, I'll show you how to install it. Right, so here we go. I've just copied everything over to my desktop. And the first thing that you'll probably want to install is the Windows drivers. And this will just be a case of installing either the 64-bit driver or the 32-bit driver. These days, most systems will be 64-bit, so it would be this one but if you're running 32-bit, you'll need that one. The way to check is to right-click on your Start button and choose the System option, and that will bring this screen up here. And you'll see System Type and 64-bit Operating System. If that says 32-bit, then you'll need to install that one. If it says 64-bit, install that one. But just double-click it, it will go through the install process. Just click Next a few times and Finish, and it's all done. As I say, I've already got this on my computer. I don't need it, so I'm not going to install it. The next thing is the update tool. Now this, we can just copy onto the desktop. So I'll stick that there. And we just run the tool from, from this right here. And finally, we have our firmware. So if I open this up, we have this FRSK file. So again, I'll put that on the desktop. And that's the file that we'll want to use to actually perform the update. So let's head over now to the workbench to get everything set up over there. Right, so here we have our RB device. This is going to be whichever device you're using, whether it's the 35, 25, you know, whatever you've got. So long as the firmware matches what you're installing, it's all good. And we also have our STK adapter. Now, what you'll need to do on this is make sure that this little switch is set to upgrade, which is all the way to the left and we're gonna be using smart port connection number two, which is again, this one on the left. So leave that little protector on there and connect up to smart port. And you can see negative, positive signal, negative, positive signal. So that's how you want to get this connected up. Right, so the first thing that we need to do is use the smart port cable to connect into smart port, which you can see on this, is RX1 is also the smart port connection. So we're gonna plug that in there. The little groove at the top is where the signal goes. So we'll put that into here. So that's our wiring on here. What we'll also need is a battery 
to power this. So this one runs on 7.4 volts to 26 volts. That's 2S to 6S. So I'm going to be using a little 3S pack here just to make sure that this powers up. What we need to do now is just connect the STK to the computer. So we'll just plug that into the USB. And now let's head back to the desktop. Right, so we've plugged in the STK adapter via USB. Next thing we need to do is open up our update tool. If you get a little message, just choose yes. And then the update tool will open. So next we need to choose the COM port. Now I know on my computer seven and eight are for wireless devices. So COM10 is the STK adapter. Next, what we need to do is load the firmware. So we're gonna click on file and we're gonna to go to our FSK file and choose open. Now it will start flashing saying finding device. What we need to do is plug in the power. And now it's found the device. It says firm, the firmware version, the hardware version and click download. So when we click download, it will flash the new firmware onto the device and we get a wait and we should eventually get a progress bar. So you can see it's at 4% now, 5%. So you can see this might take a bit of time. So make sure you've got a fully charged battery when you do this. And I'll come back once this process is finished. Right, so we're at the last couple of percent now. So we're almost done. And when it finishes, it should give us a little message. Firmware is updated. There we go, perfect timing. So we just click end, just closes the program down and then we can just disconnect everything on the workbench. So all we need to do is disconnect the power and disconnect the smart port and then we're all updated. Next time you power this on, it will have the latest version of the firmware. Okay, so now we've got our RB updated, let's get the Lua scripts on our transmitters. So today I'm gonna to show you on the X18. So I'm showing you on the X18 today for a reason, mainly because this radio has NAND storage, not just an SD card, which you'd find on the original X20 and X20S. So we need to know where to put our Lua scripts. So what we're gonna do is go into the system menu and we're gonna go into general. And if we uh, scroll down a bit, we'll find storage locations. And what we're looking for is scripts. Now, by default, I believe everything is set to radio. Um, if you use an SD card, you can actually choose where you want them stored. So I've got my scripts on the SD card. So you can see it's highlighted here. So that's where we're gonna be storing them. So let's back out of this menu and plug in the USB. And what we're gonna do is choose EFOS suite. So now on our computer, we should get a few drives um, popping up. We have our NAND storage, we have an SD card, and we have a flash. Now I've renamed all these, so they may not appear like this, but the way to tell is if you right click on the drive, it will let you know the size. So the flash is always gonna be around eight megabytes. We don't need to worry about the flash. And we have our NAND storage and the SD card. Now the NAND storage size can vary depending on the radio. Um, but the SD card size should be whatever SD card you've put into it. So this is actually the original SD card. It's four gigabytes. And the NAND storage on this radio, I can't actually remember. It's uh, 100 megabytes. If you want to know the NAND storage size for your radio, the specs are all on the FreeSky website. But we saw earlier that I'm putting the scripts on my radio on the SD card. So I'll be using that. So I can close the NAND storage and there's the SD card. Now, if you've not installed scripts before, you may not have this scripts folder. If you haven't, just right click, create a new folder and name it scripts. Spelt scripts, not script. It's very uh, specific the way you have to do this. So let's go into this folder and you can see I already have some scripts in here. Um, and now what we're gonna do is open up the RB35 um, zip file that we downloaded with the Lua scripts in it. So we'll go into the RB35 folder and you can see it's already got a scripts folder in here. So what you could do is just go to the root of your drive and just copy this straight in and it will put the files that you need in there. If you wanted to do it yourself, you can go into scripts, go into scripts and then just copy these into the scripts folder. But you can see we have these now. So let's go and take a look on the radio. So what I'm gonna do is unplug the USB cable 
and I'm actually going to restart the radio just because if you install Lua scripts, it's well worth just restarting the radio to make sure that everything that's loaded is fresh. So I'm just going to get rid of this warning. And these scripts, I believe, are in the system menu. So if you've installed the new uh, SXR tool for the Archer Plus receivers, you'll also know that that's in here too. So we have our RB35S calibration tool, which is where we can calibrate the accelerometer. We have the stabilization tool and we have whatever that is, the configuration tool. So we'll go into these tools in a different video, but this is just how to get them installed and on your radio. So I hope you guys found this video useful. After this, you should have your RB updated to the latest firmware, and you should also have the Lua scripts on your radio so you can start using them. In a future video, we will look at the Lua scripts and how to firstly calibrate the RB system, and then we'll look at the basic tools as well. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and also click the subscribe and bell icon. Then you'll be alerted when the next videos in this series come out, but also it helps other people find these videos so they can learn how to do this too. I also really want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys really help with making this channel possible. So thank you very much. Flow models like your stolen guys. Have fun, enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one.